Hey guys, today I would be talking about uh, some useful resources which will be helpful for you guys to compete in Arthamathan uh, Hackathon program which is in collaboration with Scalenza, Automation Anywhere and Microsoft. So just to start with, I'll be showing you some of the uh, basics of how to generate uh, API key from the Microsoft Azure services that I'll be going through. And then um, in our A2019 edition, how do we write up a board that talks to an API and we get the response out of that and manipulate with the help of a basic Python script. And then we can use that for our end-to-end uh, -end automation purposes. So just to start with here, I am at the Microsoft Azure website and in the products I have selected computer vision uh, API because I am just uh, trying to uh, create a bot that uh, takes up a image as, a, as an input and provides the response out of that what what kind of image it is so I'll be using computer vision API from the Microsoft Azure services so when I go inside the Microsoft cognitive services I'll be getting the um, the detailed documentations of the, of the API and all and we are just concerned about the request URL that comprises of the endpoint and uh, what is that that needs to be fitted in as a post method when I am talking to an API and then some of the request parameters uh, as per your requirement. And here are all the details that is mentioned for you which will be helpful for us to talk to the API. So here are some of the important informations that we also need to generate the content type and the subscription C. So if you are uh, a free user you will be getting a, a certain number of days for a free from Microsoft Microsoft also gives you some of the free uh, dollar credits initially to uh, enable you to play with their uh, Microsoft enabled services so I've done done that I have generated my own subscription key which I'll be using to show you guys the demo today and then there's a request body which you need to pass to the API and uh, for which you will get a response back from the API so if I just go to a postman to give you a, a brief idea of how this could have been done from a postman instead of our platform, this would have looked like this. So this is the uh, endpoint of the URL. This is my own uh, domain. And then this is the version of the API. And then I've passed the required, uh, the, the body and then the header of whatever was written in the documentation. And this is an image that I'm going to pass in this API. The image must be in a URL format. So just make it sure the image is available. Or if you also want to call the image from your local infrastructure, just make sure you have the image set it up in your, uh, in your local uh, infrastructure. So here it is. And I am all set with the body, the header value, and the endpoint, and the method of the communication with the API. That's all I need for the uh, uh, for running this and then when I hit on send hopefully I'll be receiving the response uh, yep I do receive a response so as we can see from the picture this is nothing but a horse and then the score is like uh, kind of positive because the score uh, as you go nearer to the one it kind of denotes whether you are very much positive and as it goes low it will determine whether it's uh, average or whether it's uh, fair or something like that and then there's some information about the image as well, what kind of image it is, and then the width and height of the picture. So you may uh, take whatever things you require for your use case. I'll be taking the name and the score because I am concerned about this for my use case that I'm going to demo today. So this is all about Postman. Now let's go to the A2019 interface to see uh, how we can build a bot around this. So this is um, the A2019 interface, which is a purely web-based product as compared to our old product, which was a desktop application. So uh, this is entirely a web-based product. So it has more advantages uh, uh, in, in respect of deploying or in respect of creating. You can basically create your bots from anywhere you feel. So if I go on the bots and if I click on my bots, I'll get the existing bots, which are, has already been created. And if I want to create a new bot, I can just click on this button called create bot. And I'll just give some random name to my bot. I would say Azure bot, uh, MS Azure bot. And then I'll click on this button called create and edit. As soon as I create the, uh, hit on the button, I'll come to this page where I can see uh, all of the commands, the uh, brilliant commands. Some of them are out of the box and some of them are created um, in, in my left hand side. And I'll see the three views in the middle, which talks about the flow list and dwell. So flow is nothing but a flow chart 
Pairs driven development model where you can go and develop in a in a flow view uh, diagram and then in the list you have uh, all of the uh, modules where you can drag and drop and um, develop in a listed view and you have a dual where you can develop both of the things together uh, so I'll just go with list and uh, my basic uh, objective would be to talk to an API <clears throat> so here we are using a rest command i'm not going to create a dll uh, because i have already done that in my one of my previous video and if you guys want to find out how to create a dll and then use it in the rest web services you can find out in the video link in the uh, in the description below so for this i'm using the post method the first call that uh, <clears throat> that is concerned with uh, connecting to the api yes yeah, so i'll just uh, take the parameters from the postman and I have to give uh, some of the header values so I'll also take this from uh, from the postman with which we have already hit the API And then you have the body, which is also uh, described in the API documentation. You only have to need the uh, need to change the image URL. So I've already changed that, and you can add it as the custom parameter. And then you need to make sure you uh, assign the output of the uh, the post method to a dictionary type variable. So this was not there in our old version. So which is already which is introduced in our latest web version so for creating a variable you need to create go, go to the variable tab and create hit on this button and you can name your uh, variable as response api make sure this is a dictionary type variable and which acts as an output and in here we are concerned about receiving the body of the response so i'll just give my the name of the key as body and the value would be blank because this is where we are going to receive the response from the api and we again click on this and this time we will be able to see that the uh, variable is popping up over here in the drop down so this is it we have uh, already created the code for connecting to the rest api which is just a single line of command and then we would be concerned to see if the API initially works or not so I'll just search on message which gives me a message box over here and then all I'm doing is pressing the uh, variable concern button and I'll see what's the response from my API if my uh, API is giving me the correct response or not so I run this um, please make sure before you run this you are already connected to your device and your device is also uh, enlisted uh, in the in the list. Yeah, so as you can see, the response is exactly the same which we have received. And uh, this is how we connect the API. We take the response from the API from our 2019 platform. Now this uh, looks quite, uh, the, the response is quite big and we are not interested about <clears throat> fetching the response each and every time uh, with this big parameters, right? So we want to filter out, we want to manipulate the response and then we want to only pick up the name and the score out of the response. So for this, we have to write some external codes. I mean, you can write it in any, any language or you can uh, use some of the uh, out of the box commands for that like the string operation or something like that but you can also use one of the uh, commands which is called the python so it's nothing but a python script and you can use to manipulate that so nowadays python is pretty much famous and you can get a lot of free open source codes even from google.com that was in my case at least so in here i'm just going to uh, write up a python script that does the manipulation over the response and uh, so i'm just going to write the steps uh, for manipulating the uh, response from the api so i'm just going to import the json which comes up as a, a 
response from my API. And I'm going to define a function <clears throat> which takes up the parameter. I'll <clears throat> define it later. And then I'll define a variable which takes, which uh, basically loads the JSON. Here we are also defining a, a default variable. We'll use it later. And then I'm defining an array which takes up the uh, JSON object from the response of the API. And then just a basic looping around the array. And here we are going to say, I'm going to return the array. So I'm, I'm just going to describe it later if it's <clears throat> more confusing to you guys. And then I'm returning the default uh, message. Cool. <clears throat> Okay, so this is done and uh, the <clears throat> Python version which is installed in my machine is of the version 3. So I'm uh, ticking the right uh, checkbox over here, the radio button over here. And then uh, what I'm going to do is execute this Python script. Now I'll drag and drop the execute Python script and I would also copy the script's name, sorry, the function name. And I'm going to pass the uh, the parameter to the function. And in here, I have not defined any parameter, so I'll also define it. Cool. Yeah. So the next step would be just to send out the parameters to the JSON and then I capture the output to this variable. So here this can be a little bit trickier because I'm sending the uh, JSON directly to this function but it may not even recognize. So there's a thing that we need to do in the middle. Uh, might be we need to stringify the JSON but we'll take a look at it later. Let us run this and uh, then see what happens. So we can see there's a bot error and the reason why that is we are not passing a, a we are not converting the uh, stringifying the JSON. So for here, what we need to do is that we will introduce our dictionary variable in the middle where we will get the value of the JSON and convert it to a string. So I'll keep the uh, source as the response that I'm getting from the API. I'll also describe the key. Uh, which is nothing but the body that we have already described in the variable and then we are converted into a string so i'll name this as prompt assignment string i mean i'll keep the variable as prompt assignment string so i've described this in the step number two and in the step number five instead of passing the dictionary variable as a parameter i will pass my string variable as a parameter in here and now i will uh, disable this step because i'm not requiring this anymore and we are directly going to see the prompt assignments response, which is nothing but the manipulated version of the response that we are getting from the API. And now we can see the response from the API. <clears throat> uh, it has been uh, filtered out for us and only we are getting the name and the score out of this. So in this way, you can use uh, this or you can treat this as a piece of the puzzle to solve your whole puzzle and then you can create an end-to-end -end use case which may help you to win the Artmathon uh, India 2020. So that's it. Wish you all the very best guys for uh, the Artmathon program. Bye-bye.